Hello, I'm Dr. Israel Barkin, the Medical Director of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation, and today I want to go over a new clinical study that started recruiting patients about a year ago, but uh, it's a very important study that we should bring to the awareness of every patient with prostate cancer that had radical prostatectomy or radiation and had what we call PSA recurring disease. What's unique about this study is that it combines enzalutamide, which is an androgen receptor antagonist, like a cathodex, with PSA trichome, which is an immune therapy with the name PROSTVAC. The clinical trial identifier is NCT0187-5250. And it's recruiting patient now. So let's go now and talk about the details of the study. The purpose of the study is actually to combine anti-androgen like enzalutamide together with Prostavac immune therapy. What's unique for these two type of treatments is that they were new and they were given to patients with more advanced disease. Now we have patients that had primary treatment like radical prostatectomy or radiation and the PSA is rising without any evidence for metastatic disease but still being sensitive to hormonal manipulation. The primary outcome measures the decrease in tumor regrowth rate, secondary outcome measure, immune response within three years, and also to determine the impact on PSA, the slowing of the doubling time. The estimated enrollment of 38 patients, they started in May 2013, and the study is estimated to be completed in June 2016. Here are the arms of the study, active comparator arm A and the ludamide only, and it is taken 160 milligram daily for three months. And the ludamide is called now Extandi. And the other arm is being on the, on the ludamide, but also together with the PSA trichome, which is the immune therapy of Prostvac. There is a long list here for eligibility, but basically, like all studies, you have to be 18 or older and a man. Inclusion criteria are a histological confirmation of the pathology slide by the NIH or by the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. It has to be biochemical progression defined as follows for the patient who wants to join the study. For patients following definitive radiation therapy, a rising PSA greater than or equal than 2 nanogram per ml of above their nadir, or for patient following radical prostatectomy, rising PSA after surgical procedure, PSA must have PSA greater than or equal to nanogram. What's interesting, he does not say here what is the time lapse between finishing the primary treatment and having the patient to be enrolled. The performance status has to be a good status of zero or one. Patient must have doubling time of 12 months or less. Many of the patients are extremely nervous about the riding PSA and they have doubling time which is not that rapid. They will not be qualifying to this study unless it is doubling time less than 12 months. It is defined by riding PSA is confirmed by three values done at least one week apart and over no less than one month. Recovery from acute toxicity related to prior therapy. Obviously this is for patients that just had the primary treatment like side effects of surgery or radiation, they will not be included in the study if they still have side effects. Negative CT scan, MRI, and bone scan for metastatic prostate cancer. This is an important point that I have to stress here for many of our readers, listeners, or people that are viewing this presentation. With the newer technique of PET scans and others, we are able to identify metastatic disease 
but this is not being considered metastatic disease. According to this study, only those that had it on CAT scan, MRI, or bone scan. So if you have this study negative, it doesn't matter if other studies show the metastatic disease, but these are the standards for joining this study. Obviously, hematological eligibility parameters are as usual for white count, platelet count, hemoglobin. Also, we have to know about the liver function test, and we have to know what was the PSA before the primary treatment. If it was more than 20, the patient will be excluded. History of seizure, including any febrile seizures, loss of consciousness, or transient ischemic attacks, or any condition that may predispose as to a seizure. Prior stroke, brain, AV, malformation, head trauma with loss of consciousness. This is because there were a very small number of patients in the original study with enzalutamide that were having seizures, a very small percentage, but now we hope with the new way applying the enzalutamide that this will not be a problem, but nevertheless, in order not to take any chance, they exclude patients that have any prior history of these type of problems. So if you have any question, you would like to know whom to contact and the location of the study. The study is done at the NIH. What you have on the screen here is the contact information about the nurse, Laura Oten. Her phone number is 301-451-1228. And here is her email, otteni at mail.nih.gov. And the doctor, the researcher, Ravi Maiden. Uh, his phone number is 301 496-3493 and his email address is rm480i at nih.gov. The study is conducted, as I said, by the NIH at Bethesda and you will have to be able to travel for the follow-up visits. In some cases, some assistance is provided. So if you have any question, you could try and call these numbers, although I must say the people at the NIH are very busy, so you could try and call me first at 619-906-4700. This is the phone number of the foundation. And I may be able even to sort out for you if this study is for you or perhaps other studies will fit more to your particular situation. That's the role of a coach, somebody who is not biased and who is able to take your situation and match it to an existing study that fit you directly to your needs in regard to what do you expect from the study, from the efficacy point of view, and more important maybe to some patient, what do you expect the side effects to be minimized if you join this study. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, stay well, stay informed, and stay in touch. I'm Dr. Israel Barkin. You could send me an email at drbarkin at gmail.com. Goodbye.